Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Silhouette Paint Masterclass. In today's episode, we are going to see clone tool specifically because this is really an important tool inside paint node and can be used in various ways to achieve the desired results. So let's see how the tool works and what all other properties are. Here, if you see, this is clone tool and the shortcut for that is C. Okay, so basically what clone tool does is we can sample uh, pixels from different parts of an image and use that to paint or even we can use different plates as well. I'm going to explain that later in this video. So if you hold shift in keyboard and drag, you can see we have two brushes now. We have one with green and the other with red. Red is the source and green is the target. So here I sample pixels in the area where my red brush is and I'm going to paint that sample pixel into the green colored brush here there we go so we have sample pixels over the uh, red brush area and painted that into the green zone basically that is clone and i know most of you already know what clone is because you all might have used photoshop and in photoshop there is clone tool so this is mostly similar to that but different set of properties okay so i'm going to explain some of the shortcuts which you're going to use like every now and then for uh, adjusting the brush you can just hold shift in your keyboard and offset the clone brush to sample pixel from a different source or different areas of an image and use that to paint in your target area and also you can hold control in your keyboard to scale the brush but i'm going to make a specific video for uh, brush settings later so we'll explain all these things in that video so yeah, shift for offset and control for scaling the brush and if you want to reset this brush you can simply hold shift and just click that's it uh, it's a bit buggy i feel but it should work in your latest version so also we can use different plates or different images for cloning so here i'm not going to import a different image you can do that i'm just going to import a uh, checkerboard let's see how i can connect that and uh, paint using this checkerboard which is obviously we can consider as a different image so if you zoom over here in the paint node we can see there's a green tab here and also we have some other uh, tabs which we can see this is source one source two source three and four and five and also we have a data pipe here here, like which we can make use for connecting transform data i already made tons of videos related to that so and i'm sure you already know that uh, i'm going to connect the red tab or pipe or whatever it is to the checkerboard right now you cannot see any changes over here but if you go into this pull down menu and if you select source one here you can see we have checkerboard in the viewer right now that means this is source one pipe and i have connected that into the checkerboard and we have checkerboard as a source inside our paint node so now how i can make use of checkerboard in my work uh, let's go back to output so inside clone tool we have three separate tabs that means one for clone with all the property related to cloning also we have a tab specifically for grading or filtering that means we have properties for color correction and also we have properties for filtering that means blur and sharpening and also we have a tab for warp which uh, will be explained in this video but not in that detail so inside the properties we can see there is a pull down menu for source and uh, we can see there is source one now so i'm going to disconnect this pipe let's see so now we can see there is only output and input so as soon as i connect the source one pipe into the checkerboard you can see we have source one and if i select source one you cannot see any difference here for accessing checkerboard in our viewer we can use some shortcuts i mainly use a skew for that now we have checkerboard and also we can see the plate behind that uh, you can use this mix properties to avoid that transparency i always keeps that in 100 oops sorry 100 and now we can see uh, we have checkerboard inside our viewer and how we can clone that it's going to be very easy that's it so yeah before that i'm going to explain some of the properties as well so here we have source window we can connect like multiple sources here like uh, for example i'm going to connect uh, maybe color bar here and uh, i'm going to connect another pipe into that and inside our properties we have source 2 now and if you press q in the keyboard we have um, that in the viewer as well yeah it's pretty simple to connect um, multiple plates or multiple inputs for your paint next to this pull down menu we have a small button for mask uh, let's suppose i have an alpha here uh, i'm going to take roto node and uh, copy and i'm going to connect this pipe into my roto uh, let's draw a roto here inside the copy we can keep the alpha as alpha let's see 
yeah you can see the alpha is coming from the roto and we have checkerboard as our rgb now if i am connecting this pipe into this copy node we have rgba if you go into the paint properties and select source one as the source for your paint and if you turn on this mask button now if i am painting I'm just using the alpha value inside the plate which you are using as a mask for our paintwork. If you have a roto mask for a specific character and you're painting on that character, you can use that roto mask here. Just paint to avoid edge confusion. Yeah, that's all about mask and we have frame offset here. That means if you have n number of frames in your plate, you can choose a specific frame in your reference plate and use that as a source for your paintwork. And up next we have relative. So what basically relative does is that we can change your current frame and the reference frame will automatically change relative to the current frame let's suppose if you are painting using the source image 70 and uh, you're painting on frame number one and uh, if you're moving you're moving to frame number two and you can see the reference frame is already 71 so you don't have to adjust that manually but if you want to keep this as a static frame uh, you can uncheck this and use that so if i'm going to whatever frames in my work the frame which I'm using from source one still stays at 71. So that's going to be useful in some cases. Uh, we have source match move button here, which I'm going to explain later when we learn advanced stuff. Now we have offset controls here. In other way, translate controls. We have scale top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And also we have a slider for rotation as well. So now we have checkerboard on top of our plate. So you can adjust the value and see what offset does. This is as simple as X and Y translate scale as you can see this is scale option you can turn off the scale and scale it on individual axis rotation is simply rotating the source now we have top left that means we can adjust the top left corner of this plate we have xy controls for that specific corner similar to that we have controls for top right as well yep so that's all about the transform controls and let's move into the filtering uh, we have a pull down menu for filtering i always use catmull rom i mean there are cases where we can change this uh, just explore that up next we have subpixel which is kind of an important property when you are painting like subpixel transformations you can turn on this subpixel properties to match the reference along with your input usually if you turn on subpixel your paint strokes are going to be a bit blurred so i usually avoid subpixel painting now let's see some shortcuts for the transformation yep so i just forgot to mention uh, that we can use q w e as shortcuts for transformation that means q for translate so as soon as you press q in the keyboard you can see we have source one and uh, we can nudge that using arrow keys and also we have rotation controls that means we can press w just use the arrow key for rotation as well you might have noticed that wherever I'm pressing W, you can see uh, my pivot is set right over there and I can translate, rotate or scale using that pivot point, which is very important. Also, we can use E as a shortcut for scale. You can see the values are changed in the properties as well. And uh, yeah, learning shortcuts for this is definitely going to speed up your workflow. I'm going to reset this. I'm going to zoom here. If I press arrow key once, you can see it just translated by one pixel. If I hold shift and press the arrow key once, you can see here we translated 10 pixels. Let's do a reset here. If I hold control in my keyboard and press the arrow key, you can see that's like one tenth of a pixel. This is like a sub pixel variation. So that means like one tenth of a pixel. I mean, there are various situations where you have to use control and shift and sometimes without control and shift as well. So, so these all are the shortcuts for nudging. You might be asking, is there a shortcut for transforming specific corners of this reference plate? Yes, there is shortcut for that as well. So if you want to control top left corner, that means you can press control one in your keyboard. It will activate the uh, transformation for top left corner and you can hold shift or control or even you can use arrow keys so i'm going to hold shift here and show you the difference as soon as you finish your edit uh, you can press control one to come out of that if you want to control top right you can press control two you can edit here using this you can press control three for bottom right that means i can control four bottom left uh, now you can see I simply match the 
using shortcuts alone now let's see what are these buttons uh, we have interactive and region now let's suppose you are a person who loves to transform this manually using a control in the viewer you can do that as well so right over here we have interactive button you can see the onion skin is already activated that means uh, our checkerboard is in the viewer and we have lots of controls right over here we can adjust similar to the transformations which we just saw use this four corners here this is just like manually doing it instead of shortcuts or instead of adjusting the sliders we have skew control here and also we have rotation controls right over here and also we have scale option as well if you want to do this whole thing with a specific area as my pivot i can do that as well using this region button i'm just going to select region and just draw a box right over here we have some controls for this box that means we can adjust each corners also we can place it somewhere else by just dragging the box just click on outside and it just resets this select an area right over here maybe uh, set my pivot right over there and i can adjust that it's all customizable and you have lots of controls in these properties i forgot to mention that we have different types of onion skin overlays here okay so this is just enabling onion skin overlay to be honest i always use this one i rarely used this one but if you guys are comfortable using this in your work please go ahead so this is just aligning it using a different mode uh, and we have like vertical i believe yep vertical split you can you can simply wipe your reference plate on top of your input and all we can use horizontal split that means you can use this wipe horizontally using this button yeah that's all about clone properties and let's move into the next tab that means we have grade filter here this can be used completely for color corrections that means like if there is a noticeable difference in color uh, between your input and reference plate you can use all these properties for adjusting the color for your reference plate not your plate auto grade perfect for lots of situations but yeah basically it does adjust the color automatically as the name suggests but um, i hardly got convinced results using these options and uh, if i turn off this we have properties for gain gamma lift hue and saturation as well uh, we have individual controls for individual channels just turn off this lock uh, you can adjust individually um, yeah this is all pretty much uh, standard stuff and uh, also we have filtering for blur and sharpening if your input is bit blurred and your reference is pretty sharp you can blur that you can see that right over here along with that even you can sharpen as well totally adjustable totally editable super useful in your work also we have reset button here to reset all the adjustments which you just did just reset that and it's set to default okay so here i'm using color bars instead of checkerboard for showing you how warp works it's very simple we can add pins in your screen or in your viewer and edit your reference plate with that pin i'm going to click here add a pin and just drag yeah you can see your plate is getting or your reference plate is getting warped we can add a max of 20 pins i believe uh, i remember reading that in the user guide you can adjust the pin and tag separately also you can adjust the radius holding shift in the keyboard and just drag so this is all about warping the reference plate uh, using the warp tab and also we have an option for transforming using a point track so yeah that's all about a pin tab you can press reset all to delete all the pins and one more thing i forgot to mention is that uh, as soon as you do some editing inside the warp tab and grade filter tab you can see there is a green circle right over here and if you adjust this a bit you can see right now we have a green indicator for grade filter as well the reason why we have this indicators is that it will be always inside the clone properties and it's easy for us to recognize that um, there is some adjustment already did inside grade and warp tabs so this is all about clone tool properties and um, yeah we have few more options finally i'm going to explain you about how dual clone brush works so right over here we can see one two dual we can have two different reference plates with two different transform color as well as warp properties and mix those two different reference plates for cloning into our input plate it can be quite complicated for you to understand how this works but i'm going to show you a perfect easy example to make you understand it further so making sure clone brush one is selected and i have color bar as my reference plate for that i have adjusted few properties right over here maybe it's like randomly adjusting 
not any purpose here and also some color operations as well uh, and also i'm taking a checkerboard as a different reference plate and uh, adding that as source two okay now i'm going to select brush number two the shortcut for that is shift alt two and this is shift alt one as soon as i select you can see i have the checkerboard because i have selected source two for that and uh, i have adjusted this a little bit uh, maybe a little bit bluish now if i view one you can see we have a different reference plate with a different set of properties it's another reference plate with another set of properties now if i turn off my clone and if i click on dual we have a mix properties here uh, i'm going to keep this as 50. now in the viewer we have two source brushes and one target paint right over here we can see this is a mix up of color bar and checkerboard uh, i can adjust this even further using this mix node yeah so that's all about uh, the dual clone brush and uh, i hope this tutorial is super useful to every one of you because i made a lot of effort to record this and edit it so i believe it serves the value if you guys have more questions about any of these brushes please comment it down in the next class i will end this module by explaining some of the brush properties as well so see you in the next episode